Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this session. And as promised, in this particular lecture, we are going to dive right into various classifications of computer architecture. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Now, coming to computer architecture's classifications, there are various models. Among them, we will be learning about two most popular approaches. So, let's start with the first one. Computer architecture is broadly classified into specifically two categories. Von Neumann architecture and non von Neumann architecture. Now, von Neumann machines have the following characteristics it has three basic hardware subsystems the CPU, the main memory, and the I.O. system. Moreover, it must be a stored program computer. That means the main memory system holds the program which controls the computer operation and the computer can manipulate its own program more or less. Also, it can do the same to any other data stored inside the memory. Furthermore, it carries out instructions sequentially so the CPU appears to execute one operation at a time. Well, the major debate has always been about having a single path between the main memory and the processor proposed by this very architecture. Now, already in our previous discussion, we came to know about von Neumann's professorship at Princeton University and that is the reason why this architecture was also referred to as Princeton architecture. Now, people from Harvard University proposed another model, which adopted most of the features proposed in the Princeton architecture, except for the fact they used two different memory units and thus pioneered parallelism. This is popularly known as Harvard architecture. Let's try to understand the need of it. First of all, systems having pure von Neumann architecture stores the instructions and the data in the same memory unit. Thus, both the data and the instructions are phased over the same path. This means the processor can't simultaneously read an instruction and operate on data. This phenomenon is known as von Neumann bottleneck and was first officially discussed by the great John Backus, inventor of Backus normal form for context free languages during his 1977 ACM Turing Award lecture. Next, there is modified Harvard architecture, which cannot completely be classified as von Neumann architecture as it doesn't strictly follow the von Neumann principles. But it is more of a combination between both the Harvard and the Princeton architecture. Now, let's study them in a bit details. Now, in Harvard architecture, we have separate memory units. One is for strictly storing the instructions and the other for the data items. This way, the processor can both read an instruction and perform data memory access at the same time. Therefore, computers belonging to this architecture family are faster because instruction fetches and data accesses are not competing for the single memory pathway anymore. Now, coming to modified Harvard architecture, it is very much like the Harvard architecture itself. However, it relaxes the strict division of instruction memory and data memory. Here, the processor is accompanied by a small yet fast memory storage called cache. When the processor is executing from the cache, it acts as a pure Harvard architecture. And when it is accessing from the backing memory, it acts like a pure von Neumann machine. This modification is widespread in modern processors. So, this was the first approach of classification of computer architecture. Let's move on to the next one. In this model, computer architectures are classified by a variety of characteristics including the number of processors, the number of programs they can execute, and the memory structures being used. The first group is SISD, that is Single Instruction Stream, Single Data Stream. The von Neumann architecture belongs to this specific category. SISD computers have one CPU that executes one instruction at a time. Hence, single instruction stream and fetches and stores one item of data at a time, hence single data stream. The next group is SIMD, that is single instruction stream, multiple data stream. Processor array falls into this category. SIMD machines have a control unit that operates like a von Neumann machine that executes a single instruction stream, but they have more than one ALUs. The control unit generates the control signals for all the ALUs which execute the same operation on different set of data items, generally in lock steps. Hence, multiple data streams. 
The next group of computers are MISD, multiple instruction streams, single data stream. Logically, machine of this class would execute various different programs on the same data items. This group doesn't have any particular practical implementation. Nonetheless, some machines belonging to the next category can be used in this manner. Alright, the next and the final type is MIMD, multiple instruction streams, multiple data streams machines. These are also known as multiprocessors. These are comprised of more than one independent processors and each one of them can execute a different set of instructions. Hence, multiple instruction streams on its own set of data, hence multiple data streams. Now, this classification was proposed by Michael J. Flynn in 1966. Since then, it has been used as a tool in design of modern processors and their functionalities. That is why it is also known as Flynn's Taxonomy. Alright folks, that was the two most popular classifications of computer architecture. Hope you liked it and learned something new. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you all for watching.